Hey friends, welcome back to my studio. I'm gonna play with painting a peony today on a 10 inch by 10 inch canvas from Michaels. I've already painted it with, I actually painted, put a little gesso on it and let it dry overnight. And then I painted it white this morning. I just, why? Just because people ask me if I do that and I don't. So I thought I would do some of that this time and see what I think. Um, it's a gallery wrapped and spine canvas, inch and a half deep. I've got the word love on there. I wrote that on there with a chalk pastel. And what I'm thinking of doing, oh here, first, the reference photo is on Unsplash. Isn't that pretty? I love the leaf. I'll link that in this video's description. Okay, so what I'm thinking of doing is using my primary colors where I use quinacridone, magenta, cad, yellow, medium hue, and thalo blue green shade. But I think I'm gonna paint the background greenish and maybe a little greenish here and see if that helps me sort of bring up the values and the color and the warmer colors in the peony. And then I'm gonna get closer, mix some, some greens and uh, we'll get started and have some fun. Hey friends, so I've got Thalo Blue Green Shade right here. Let's see if we can get it to focus. It might be focusing, but I have progressive lenses, so it doesn't look like it is. <laughs> uh, cad Yellow, both of those are Cad Yellow Medium Hue. They're all going to be Liquitex. I like Liquitex because they'll stand on the caps. You could store them. You could hang them. Some people just throw them in a drawer. I, I kind of like storing them this way because then the paint stays down here. And then I put out a little quinacridone magenta so I can mute and change the greens a little bit. And I'm just, I think this is going to be my green palette because I pretty much have greens and then I have the peony. So I think I'm just going to make mix a green palette and then we'll take just a little bit of quinacridone magenta because it's strong and see what kind of green we get. Oh, I wonder if I'm going to want a little more yellow in there. Of course, I can um, I can just grab some yellow. We don't have to mix it just so. And I don't have a ton that I'm going to paint, a ton of green, because I'm just going to paint. I'm going to come into, hopefully I've, I've figured it out, and I'll come into the flower a little bit with the greens. And then the peony will actually come out further. So that's probably actually plenty yellow green. Let's pull some out. I'm gonna grab some yellow just to add to my puddle just so it's bigger. Oh, we can make that more here. We can make this one more yellow green. That, that would probably make more sense. In that case, I probably shouldn't have pulled some as much green out. Yep, I change my mind on the fly quite a bit. I make tons of mistakes. And some people are like, well, how do you know what color to use or how do you know where to start? I just decided. Plus, if you guys, you can buy these colors. You can buy whatever, use whatever blue you have. You know, use a red, use a crimson red. And you don't have to buy a ton of paint if I don't put out a bunch of different colors all the time. So I have quite a few videos with these colors. Okay, there, I rather like that yellow green. So let's make, I'm just wiping off my palette knife. Oh, I, it's worn off, I got this palette knife from Blick Art Materials. That thalo blue strong. Plus I have a smaller, So all I'm doing is mixing a cool green and a warm green. That's just where I'm aiming for. And then I'm gonna mix sort of a, a muddy green, hopefully. Because then I have sort of three pots to paint from, and then I can mix more greens and more colors from there. Okay, I'm gonna set this down. All right, so I'm just gonna grab a little from both of my Let me 
Let's see what happens when we add some magenta. Oh, that might be too much. It should make a muddy green. I may have too much magenta. I always get scared when I'm mixing. Oh, I think that's going to be okay. It's quite warm because the magenta's warm. Oh, I rather like that. I always go through more yellow, which is why I buy the yellow in the big tube. It saves me a little bit of money. Plus, it says on the website that this isn't as heavily pigmented in the basics as the uh, professional heavy body, but I can't tell. If you guys can tell, let me know. That might just be a personal problem I have. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue. I'm just trying to make a little bit more of my muddy green. I kind of liked it when it was a little, I think I kind of liked it when it was a little warmer. Now it's just playing, you know, personal preference. I'm just looking, also just looking for a darker green than those two. I think I'm going to grab even a little more. Let's warm it up a little bit. Oh, it's starting to almost look black, isn't it? That's kind of fun. Okay, so I'm going to take a big brush. You don't have to mix this well either. I just kind of like to mix them up. Um, I'm going to take a big brush so it'll make quicker work. And I'm also going to paint the sides. Let's see. I guess I'll just, I should show you. This is a one inch flat brush from Low Cornell. And I'm going to paint the green areas and I'll be back in a bit. So what the heck am I doing and why am I doing it? <laughs> um, short answer is I don't know, but I am, I have my Google map on here. I, I blew up the photo, the peony photo to 10 by 10 and just printed it out and used it as a traceable. So I, I like having, I like having those turn by turn directions, which is fun. Uh, I painted the leaf while I have my green palette out. And I, I followed the reference photo. It could maybe be lighter here, but it's fine for now. I've got bluer greens there and some yellow, yellower greens over there. And then I thought, this is really dark, so I just was blending it out with some lighter colors. <coughs> Sorry, guys. And then um, I lost a couple of shapes because I, I had uh, scribbled on the back of my traceable with a dark brown. And then around the edges, I used white, but then I missed a couple spots. So what's nice about a flower is if I miss a couple spots, it's not the worst thing. And then I also just sketched them in either with my charcoal pencil, which is black, or this white charcoal pencil, which I think is funny. Somebody's gonna know one of these days and put in the comments what this is, because to me, charcoal is black. It's not white. So let me know if this is made of something other than charcoal. What else? I'm going to um, put out the same colors, but I, I don't know, I'll probably grab some of this white. I put way too much white out. Oh, maybe I need to back up a little bit. I had to mix greens a couple times. I had to put yellow out several times because I ended up just even mixing on the palette. 
I don't know if you could tell that in the time lapse, but I would just like put down some straight up yellow because it's going to get much more green when I put it on top of the green background. Um, I think that's about it. So I'm going to put out a more rusty pinky or, or even maybe some orange palettes where this one's a pretty messy green palette. Same colors though. I'm still going to use the Quinacridone Magenta, the Cad Yellow Medium Hue, and the Thalo Blue Green Shade. Oh, and Titanium White. Okay guys, just wanted to pop in with what the heck I'm thinking and what the heck I'm doing. I put some green up here to try to keep you in the painting more. I may paint right over it. I don't know if that was... So sometimes, even though I have turn by turn directions with the Google map, it's not the best analogy because I might want to go, oh, there's road construction. So I need to, you know, you know, make it a, make a U-turn or try a different road, that kind of thing. I think that analogy is stinking. <laughs> okay, guys, I'll be back in a bit. I thought I'd pop in. I've been using a quarter inch flat brush here in this last little bit. I am literally finding shapes. There's a bunch here. I printed out. There are a bunch of shapes and you don't have to paint every shape. Um, I'm going pretty close right now and my values are kind of flat, but I don't want to use white yet. Like I'll put white right there white right there hopefully you can see that um, we're going to start the live here so i wanted to pop in and let you know that this next bit i'll download the live and time lapse it here or i'll link the live in this video's description and you can go watch while i work on more of this peony and i think i don't know guys um i will let you know in the video description and then when i this painting is finished and I post it. I think I might want to put some structure gel on those white areas too, kind of make them come forward. Maybe some structure gel here. That might be kind of fun. Okay guys, the next bit's the live and then I'll be back. <music> Hey friends, I just wanted to pop in because that last little bit was the live. As I mentioned just a little bit ago, I'll link that in this video's description. I widened this dark area. I realized that I was off. And then I realized I had two of these shapes um, in the flower. So I fixed that during the live. And I actually kind of like this orange that I put in. I might put in a little more of that. But right now there's just a whole bunch more of finding shapes and finding some basic values. This is starting to look kind of fun because it's, I think it's near the center of the peony. So that's a, a nice petal shape. 
Okay guys, uh, when something comes up, I'll be back in a bit. Hey friends, what do you think? I am not done. I want to put some white here. Definitely a white on that skinny little piece there. And I think I still want, I might go over all the pink petals. I don't know, maybe not all of them. Um, give them a little more depth of color. I really like the depth of color in the green. It's going to look smoother on the video. I did paint. I just kind of guesstimated the top and the sides. Oh, you know what? Oh, I didn't need to paint the bottom much. I can maybe paint a little more on the bottom there. But yeah, I think I'm gonna, I think next step is white. Maybe even darker or maybe glaze a little brown down here. How this is kind of muted up here. This isn't muted in my reference photo, but I'm wondering if maybe I might, or just leave it as is. It has white right there in my reference photo. But maybe the white will do enough. Keep, your, keep you kind of right in here. Okay, just thought I'd pop in and let you know what I'm thinking. I'll be back in a bit. Hey friends, I'm done. So I did take a little of this rusty brown and some matte medium. You can use water. I like the matte medium a lot of times because it makes it feel more like paint. Whereas if you use water, it can feel like it gets really thin and sometimes you can see the little grains of um, pigment. And I just took a half inch brush. I think you can see it. And I just glazed over some of the flower petals. And then I took, well then I reinforced some of the colors. Like I put a little more, um, what's nice about the quinacridone is it's semi-transparent. So I can glaze with it, or you could add matte medium to it. But I put like a little darker color here to make this white pop. Where else? I did it some other places, but I'm not sure exactly where. Kind of darken that a little bit so it goes down in a little more. Just kind of played with it a little bit and added little bits of white. And then I did put out some structure gel, which I've been using in videos recently. I painted some flowers in a pumpkin uh, with palette knife and I did white flowers. Um, on a blue background with a palette knife and a spoon. I used a plastic spoon. And then I've got an abstract that I use this structure gel in. It's a blue abstract. It kind of looks like a, a wave. Anyway, I did put a little bit of structure gel in some white. Um, that's heavy body white, so I don't know if I really needed to do that. 
And then I've got some thicker, just little thicker blobs, but not a lot. I don't know if you can even see it here. I can't tell if you can see it. So this area has a thicker blob. That has a spot. That's like got a little spot just to kind of give you an idea where to look. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. I can see my phone, but I can't tell. I can't tell if you can see it. Um, I have a lot more yellows than in probably a peony, a pink peony would have. It would be pinks and whites. But I kind of like the glow and the warmth of it. I think it's fun. You can paint it light pink, however you would want to do it. What else? I think that might be about it. Oh, and then my, so I, I glazed it with a, that sort of rusty brown. And then I kept my whites pretty much in here. I mean, I've got a spot there. Got, it's not as white white, but I've got a little white there, so it kind of plays with it. That, that helps keep you here. That's why I did that. Okay guys, let me know what you think of this one. The reference photo will be in this video's description. I love hanging out with you guys. I love the comments. I, I think I respond to them all, but I, I know sometimes that YouTube and Facebook, um, they don't send me an email or show me the comments. So if I missed you, I didn't do it on purpose. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for your support. Great, big, happy art hugs, and I hope to chat with you soon. Bye guys.